Hello, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church Vlog as we continue in our series of 100 men and women of the Bible. Today we're going to be looking at Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the wife of a priest named Zechariah. She was also the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. When Elizabeth is first mentioned in the Bible, she is, as Luke puts it in Luke chapter 1 verse 7, in her advanced in years. This could mean anything from middle age to old age. It's a bit like asking one of the children from our groups how old I am. You'll get an answer of anything between 20 and 120. But whatever age Elizabeth was, we're also told in Luke chapter 1 verse 7 that they were, she was childless because Elizabeth was unable to conceive. This must have been very difficult for Elizabeth and her husband in their day and in their culture, the whole purpose of marriage was to have children, to continue the family name. And we're told that Elizabeth and Zechariah were righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. I wonder how Elizabeth must have felt being faithful to God, praying continually for a child, and yet... She had passed childbearing age. To Elizabeth and Zechariah, the time had passed and they must have resigned themselves to the fact that they would never have a child. Elizabeth would have been living under a heavy cloud, a heavy cloud of shame that she was still childless. But God had a plan. He had a plan for Elizabeth and his timing was perfect. To God, all things are possible, and his time is not our time. He sent an angel to Zechariah, telling him that they would have a child. Zechariah doubted what the angel was telling him, and was struck dumb. He returned home to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth became pregnant. What joy must have filled Elizabeth's heart at that time. Elizabeth and Zechariah had prayed and prayed and prayed for many years for a child. And whilst they thought the time had passed to be able to conceive, to be able to have a child, and their prayer hadn't been answered, and yet they had remained faithful to God. They had still trusted, they had still obeyed his commandments. But God's timing was perfect. Elizabeth became pregnant around the same time as Mary became pregnant. There were six months difference, which meant that Elizabeth had gone through the pregnancy first and was six months along the line when Mary became pregnant with Jesus. Mary and Elizabeth were able to share that experience. It was an experience that only they would have been able to understand the miracle of the birth of both of their babies in different ways. And Elizabeth was able to encourage Mary. When Mary and Elizabeth met together whilst they were pregnant, we hear of that beautiful song of praise that Mary sings from deep within her heart. And as they met, the baby within Elizabeth's womb jumped and the Holy Spirit told Elizabeth that Mary's child was the Messiah. What joy that must have been for both of them and what encouragement that they would have been for each other. These two women who knew each other, the younger who was carrying the Messiah and the older woman who was carrying the one who would lead the way for him. So God's timing was perfect. Elizabeth and Zechariah had lived faithful lives under the shadow of shame, having no idea that God had such a plan for them, that they would have a child and that child would be called a prophet of the Most High and that he would prepare the way for the Lord. In today's modern world of fast food, same day deliveries, which don't get me wrong, I really appreciate same day or next day deliveries, a world where everything is instant and goes out of fashion or out of date so quickly, it's important to remember that our timing 
is not God's timing. God doesn't give us a best before date or a use by date. God, God can and does use any one of us at any age, regardless of our abilities, our strength, our health. If we are faithful and willing, then we all have roles in his kingdom. God can and will and does use any of us. For Elizabeth, her life must have changed dramatically at that time. It's hard to imagine the joy that must have filled her heart as the new life began to grow within her, as that heavy cloud was lifted and she no longer needed to live in shame, but was set free from that. Last week, we received a Christmas card from the lovely Dorcas, and I thought it'd be lovely to finish this, this blog today by reading the words that she wrote. Dear Church, I love Christmas. Every December, I try to focus on one truth that the Christmas story reveals to us. This time, the words of Elizabeth have caught my attention when she says, How kind the Lord is. He has taken away my shame. Jesus came and later on died to take away all our shame. So may you all know his kindness this Christmas and may you all know the freedom that comes from when he takes away, not just that shame, but all shame. I love the story of Elizabeth and how God sets this woman free from her shame. But what I love even more is that isn't the end, that Jesus came for each and every one of us. As Dorcas has written in that card, he came to set us all free. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that, yeah, that you did come, that you came for each and every one of us to set us free from our shame, to set us free from our pain. Thank you, God, that your timing is not our timing. Thank you that you use each and every one of us in the way that you know is best for us. And Lord, thank you that you can and do use us in your kingdom. But we thank you more than anything for Jesus. And at this time of year, as we remember the baby born in a stable, we remember that that is a mighty God the one who has come to set us free. Thank you, Lord. Amen.